Right, uh, this video is titled Algebra Forming Expressions. A couple of keywords, expression and symbol. The objectives are, hopefully you'll be able to understand how algebra can be used, and also to be able to use algebra to form some basic algebraic expressions. Now, this activity hopefully will lay some foundations for some later work on algebra. Now, I intend to try and meet these two objectives using one activity. That activity is known as a think of a number activity. And you've probably seen this kind of activity before. Uh, I'll just run through it with you. Um, the first thing is, and you need to do this in your head, so I'll talk it through. Um, think of a number between 1 and 10. So keep that to yourself in your head. Add 3 to that number. Add 5 to the result. Now subtract 1 from that, add 6 to it, and finally subtract the number that you first thought of. Okay, uh, if I went a little bit fast for you there, uh, just feel free to pause the video and go through it again. Now what you should have found is that the answer you got at the end, regardless of the number that you started with, was 1. If it didn't work, as I said, you might want to pause it and go back through that. Now, there's a few reasons why that works and why the answer is always going to be 1. And we can actually use the concept of algebra to explain why it works. Now, before I go into some algebraic expressions, I'm first going to go into the idea of using a symbol. That's one of our keywords, using a symbol to represent something that's unknown. So when I asked you to think of a number between 1 and 10, that number was unknown to me didn't know what it was, so I'm going to use a symbol to represent that number. And I think I'll use a question mark. So that's, that represents the number that you thought of in your head. I then ask you to add 3 to that number. So the unknown number represented by a question mark plus 3. And what I have here is a simple basic algebraic expression which combines an unknown and a number. I then continue, add 5. So the unknown number, add 3, now add 5. Now, the question mark represents the number which is unknown, so I can't really do very much with that. That's got to stay as a question mark because I don't know what it is. However, the 3 and the 5, I can actually combine these I can simplify them. 3 plus 5 is 8, so that can be simplified to question mark plus Eight. Now I need to move on, subtract 1, so the unknown number represented by a question mark, plus 8, subtract 1, gives me 8 minus 1, which is question mark plus 7. Again, remember the question mark represents the unknown number that you thought of in the first place. Then we move on to subtract 6, so our symbol, plus 7. Subtract 6. Again, we can't subtract the 6 from the question mark because we don't know what it is. We can subtract 6 from the 7. 7 take away 6 is 1. So symbol, question mark, plus 1. 7 minus 6 is 1. And the final step, so subtract the number you first thought of. Well, the number you first thought of, I still don't know what that is. But I do know it's represented by a question mark. So the last expression that I had was question mark plus 1. If I subtract the number I first th thought of, I'm going to subtract the symbol question mark. And question mark, or unknown number, take away question mark, or unknown number, leaves nothing. Whatever that was, take away whatever it was, leaves nothing. So if it was 2, 2 take away 2 is nothing. All I'm left with is 1. Hence, my answer is 1. Now, that gives you hopefully a basic idea of how we can represent an unknown using a symbol. Now, in maths, we don't usually use um, question marks to represent unknowns. What we do use is letters. So, if we can get that straight, if we can use a letter to represent that unknown, we're now in the realms of algebra. So instead of question mark, I could use any letter I wanted to. I'm going to use the letter X to represent that unknown. So again, 
the number you thought of in your head between 1 and 10 represented by the letter X. And I can go on now to form some algebraic expressions using the ideas that I had in this first part. So add 3 to it, so unknown number represented by X plus 3. Add 5 to that, so X 3 plus 5 gives me 8. Again, I can't add the 3 to the X because I don't know what the X is. So I can only represent that as a symbol. Um, subtract 1, so X plus 8. Take away 1 gives me X plus 7. Subtract 6 from that, so X plus 7 take away 6. It leaves me the X. 7 plus 6 is 1. And you can see the similarities between these expressions and the expressions that we formed over on this side. Except these are algebraic expressions because we're using letters now instead of uh, any symbol that we wanted to. Uh, and the final step, x plus 1, and I'll write this one out in full. Take away the number I first thought of, which is x, or represented by x rather, and you can see x, take away x, leaves you with nothing, and that leaves you just with the 1 on its own. Achieving the same result, as using the question mark, except we formed some basic algebraic expressions. Right, now, I'd like to give you a slightly, slightly more challenging example. Uh, have a look at this one. And I'd like you to pause the video at this stage and have a go at, see if you can make, or form some algebraic expressions using this think of a number activity. And I'll start you off. I'll give you the letter that uh, I'd like you to start with. So let's just call this letter N. So the unknown number between 1 and 10 that you'd think of in your head, call it n, and you try and complete this and form all the necessary algebraic expressions and see what answer you come to at the end. Right. Hopefully you've had a good go at that. Um, slightly more challenging than the previous one, and I'll talk it through as I go, as, as I go into it. Uh, so the first one, I gave you the letter n, add 1, a bit straightforward there, n plus 1. The next bit, double the result. Well, if I double the result, what I need to actually do is to double the whole of that because that is my result from step two, my unknown number plus one. And I can't combine that other than to write it as n plus one because I don't know what n is, so I can't add one to it. I can only write it as that expression. So when I double the result, I've actually got to double each one of those individual expressions. So I've got to double the n, giving me two n, and double the one, giving me positive 2. Okay, so 2n plus 2. Simply double that result there. Next bit, add 3. So 2n plus 2, add 3. 2 add 3 is 5. Again, I haven't changed the 2n because other than doubling it and saying it's doubled to 2n, I can't add or subtract for that matter any values from that or add to that because it's an unknown at the moment. So next step, subtract 4. So 2n plus 5, take away 4, gives me 2n plus 1, add 5. 2n plus 1, add 5, gives me 2n plus 6. Now half the result, very similar to what we did when we doubled it over here. You've got to half each individual expression. So half of the 2n gives me n, half of the 6 gives me 3, and after that, really, it becomes quite straightforward. Add 6, very similar to the first one. 3 plus 6 is 9. Subtract 7. n plus 9 minus 7 is n plus 2. Add 8. n plus 2 add 8 gives you n plus 10. Subtract 9 gives you positive 10. Take away 9. n plus 1. And the final thing, I'll write it out again in full n plus 1, take away the number I first thought of, which is n, or represented by n. I'll just circle around those to highlight them. n, take away n, leaves it with nothing, and the 1 is all that's left from that expression. And let's just check that. Let's have a look. And indeed, your answer should have been 1. So no matter what number you pick between 1 and 10, if you go through, through those operations, the final answer should always be 1. Right, 
Now, let's have a quick look back at those objectives then. We said that we would be able to understand how algebra can be used. So we gave an example of using a think of a number activity to show how we can use algebra to represent an unknown. And that basically is what we use algebra for, to represent an unknown value. The second objective was to use algebra to form some basic algebra expressions, and we did that. We looked at the two key words, the symbol, and in math, the symbols we use are letters and expressions, and we just formed some basic algebra expressions there and some slightly more slightly more advanced ones there. Okay? And that's the end of the lesson.